I accidentally watched a film produced by a Taiwanese company on TV. At the opening, the famous male star said, This movie is called So and So, but it is not about the superstition of cause and effect, good will be rewarded with good, evil will be punished with evil. We must get rid of this superstition. This film was originally a drama with social educational significance, but unfortunately it was ruined by a superfluous explanation by this conceited movie star and TV MC in order to eliminate superstition. Good will be rewarded with good, and evil will be punished with evil. This law of cause and effect is part of the truth in the universe. Many philosophers and space physicists have already proven that the law of cause and effect does exist in the universe. To put it simply, it means that the direction and endpoint of the movement return to the starting point. I have said it before, just like a boomerang thrown from the hand, it will fly back and hit the thrower himself. This is the most superficial metaphor. Every movement in the entire universe is cyclical and regressive. The law of cause and effect is being objectively studied and proven in modern science. But a movie star dares to openly say on television that the law of cause and effect is superstition. This incident reflects his low level of personal knowledge and his irresponsibility to society. He thinks he is smart and scientific to bust superstitions. He sees the world based on the physical and chemical common sense of old middle school textbooks that are decades behind. He blindly lead the masses with his ignorance. Good will be rewarded, and evil will be punished. This is the single most effective concept and law that maintains the social order in this world. Artificial laws do not have an absolute deterrent effect on the human heart. Obviously, the law stipulates that murderers are to be punished severely, but can the death penalty and life imprisonment deter all murderers? The power of the law to control people's hearts and minds is extremely limited and not far-reaching enough. In addition, Laws vary greatly from country to country and from nation to nation. In Taiwan, the laws are stricter, and drug trafficking and murderers must be sentenced to death. However, in the United States and Canada, the laws are more lenient, there is no death penalty, the maximum penalty is life imprisonment, and parole can be granted upon completion of 25 years of imprisonment, so there is not much deterrent effect on crime at all not to mention the function of education and rehabilitation. Therefore, many inhumane cases continue to appear in the United States and Canada, and the crime rate is relatively high. In societies in the United States, Canada, and Western Europe, most people do not know the law of cause and effect in the universe mentioned by Buddhism, and do not understand that good will be rewarded and evil will be punished. Therefore, the morals of Western society have declined. Everyone values current utilitarianism and materialistic enjoyment, regardless of the welfare of others. In the past, Westerners revered Christianity and at least feared God and knew good and evil. Now Christianity has lost its moral binding force on Western society, especially the new generation of young people. In addition, the criminal law is too lenient. No wonder the crime rate in Western society is ascending. If people of the world, like the Chinese Buddhists, generally recognize the law of karma and know that good will be rewarded and evil will be punished, the world will become calmer. Perhaps there would not be any hatred between Christians and Muslims in Lebanon. In fact, 5,000 years ago, the Israelis left Egypt and entered the Canaan region under the leadership of Moses. Wherever they went, they slaughtered all the cities and killed hundreds of thousands each. Please refer to the Old Testament books of kings and judges. Claiming to be God's only chosen people and rejecting all foreign races, the Israelis have sown evil causes. Thousands of innocent souls who were massacred by them in the past will come back to the world to take revenge. So there was Nazi Germany's anti-Jewish behavior and Hitler and his followers massacred six million Jews. Although it was cruel, it was also the retribution of cyclic karma. The ancestors of the Israelis continued to exterminate the descendants of other peoples for 5,000 years, sowing their own evil. As a result, they reap the consequences. Today, the descendants of Israel are being massacred by others. 
Now Israelis and Arabs in Lebanon are massacring each other and reaping the consequences. Israel is an extremely xenophobic nation which does not have the so-called ideas of fraternity and God's love for the world. The religion of Israel, Judaism, is an extremely xenophobic and primitive religion, which is basically different from Christianity. Jesus studied Buddhism 2,000 years ago, when he was about 18 to 30 years old. For details, see St. Peter's book Aquarian Apostles Chronicles, which describes in detail Jesus' study in India. Unfortunately, St. Paul was at odds with St. Peter and excluded St. Peter's Aquarian Apostles Chronicles from the New Testament. Thus preventing the world from seeing the fact that Jesus practiced Buddhism and Pure Land sect in India. Jesus traveled through Damascus, Persia, and other places, and returned to Israel via Turkey, adopting the simple Buddhist Pure Land sect and creating another religion. He contended fraternity and equality, human beings should love each other, and advocated believe in the Lord and gain eternal life and the kingdom of heaven is in your heart. All of these are similar to what the Pure Land sect says, if one is dedicated to the Amitabha Buddha wholeheartedly. One can be reborn in the Western world of ultimate bliss. Treat enemies and relatives equally. Buddhism promotes no discrimination. Jesus also said, Love your neighbor and love your enemy. Buddhism talks about forbearance and diligence. Jesus also taught people, If someone spits on you, let him spit on the other cheek. If we look carefully, we will find that Jesus also said many times that good deeds will lead to blessings. This is the concept of good deeds will be rewarded. In short, Buddhism and Christianity have many similarities. Even if you don't believe that Jesus went to India to study Buddhism, you cannot deny that the two religions share many similar virtues and lofty ideals. In the New Testament, it is clearly recorded that Jesus began to preach at Jewish gatherings when he was 12 years old. However, it suddenly jumped to when he was about 31 years old and officially entered Jerusalem to preach. Don't you feel strange that the New Testament doesn't mention a word about this period from age 12 to 31? There is nothing surprising. It is just that the book Aquarian Apostles Chronicles written by the great disciple Peter was later deleted by Paul. Today's Bible is incomplete. If you are interested, you may look for an English translation of Aquarian Apostles Chronicles. This book will be available in the libraries of major universities. Of course, some Christians will never acknowledge this book. However, they cannot explain why there are almost no quotations from St. Peter in the New Testament, while the Romans to Paul occupy most of the space. The teachings that Jesus adopted from Buddhism were certainly attacked by the Judaism of primitive peoples. How could the Jews, who were xenophobic and proud of killing foreigners, allow Jesus' fraternity regardless of race? So the Jews preferred to release the murderer Barabbas and crucify Jesus. The Jews crucified Jesus, but they did not expect that Christianity would rapidly develop into the largest religion in the world today. Unfortunately, Today's Christianity is full of factions, fighting against each other. Moreover, the doctrines taught are increasingly far away from the original meaning of Jesus' fraternity. Moreover, many churches have developed a narrow xenophobic mentality. The cults Jesus condemned were those in the Middle East that worshipped golden bulls and idols of obscene gods, not pointing to Buddhism. Unfortunately, some Christians have misunderstood and have taken the liberty of interpreting scripture to attack all other religions. In addition, the concept of good deeds is not mentioned much. The medieval Vatican advocated belief in God as the absolute Lord and called for people to fear God. But it does not emphasize the distinction between good and evil but only teaches people to fear Almighty God. This is actually far away from the original meaning of Christianity. Nowadays, most churches have returned to the original teachings of Jesus and encourage people to be kind and helpful. However, it seems that they have not adopted the concept of the law of cause and effect. Perhaps it is because that is the truth advocated by Buddhism. Most Christians are too discriminating and unwilling to adopt Buddhist principles.
Christianity has made great contributions to Western society and has become the moral pillar of modern Western society. The merits of Christ must not be erased because of the corruption of the medieval church. However, Christianity does not talk about the law of cause and effect, nor does it emphasize that there are rewards for good and evil, which does not have enough influence on the world's goodness, especially since most people in the world today are no longer willing to be ruled by a theocracy, and no longer blindly enslave themselves to serve a God who is unpredictable in his moods. It can be said that a tyrannical God who is the master of mankind's life, death, and well-being. The concept has been rapidly fading away due to the advent of the age of space science. The wise man begins to seek self-awareness and self-help. But the unwise man, having lost the sovereign God who shocks and terrifies him, and not knowing where justice lies, and being tempted by materialistic desires, selfish desires, interests, and so on, his human nature gradually returns to the primitive animalistic nature of the primitive age. These people don't know that there is reward for good and punishment for evil, and they don't believe in karma at all. They only see the immediate fulfillment of their own desires for profit, and they no longer think that killing and harming others will sow bad seeds and lead to bad consequences in the future, and they will have to pay back in the next life for what they have failed to do in this life. So some people kill others, loot property, rape vulnerable women, kill innocent people, exterminate clans and cities, and even kill their relatives unethically. Not long ago in Canada, a 20-year-old man shot his parents, siblings, all seven members of his family, and the Lord ruled that he was insane and didn't know what he was doing. There is a sentence in the New Testament, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Unfortunately. This sentence, full of forgiveness, has been used by Western lawyers today as a shield to defend murderers. Therefore, he was sentenced as not guilty. The Christian army massacred civilian women and children in Beirut, Lebanon, they also said it was God's command. Islamic Arabs massacred Israelis is also said to be a mission from Allah, God. Everyone claims to be the righteousness of God. Obviously, the concept of God derived from the national basis, the so-called justice, has no definite definition at all, but is purely based on selfishness as the starting point. How many people used it to commit crimes under false pretenses? These are completely different from the fraternity Jesus talked about. Naturally, it is also different from the Buddhist concept of compassion and abstaining from killing. Unfortunately, the world is not aware of this and has learned only the bare bones of the doctrine. If everyone in the world believed that good will be rewarded and evil will be punished. If everyone in the world believed in Buddhism and forbade killing, greed, sexual immorality, and anger. If everyone had compassion in their hearts, if everyone is willing to relinquish his interests in accordance with Buddha's teachings, how could there be so many wars and massacres in this world? Western religious concepts do not talk about the law of cause and effect because they do not understand the structure of the universe. They don't understand that the law of cause and effect is one of the dynamic laws of the universe, because they only know the limited universe, sky and earth, and don't know the infinite universe. Buddhism is the only one that understands the infinite universe. The concept of the infinite universe in Buddhism can be generally seen in various sutras. We can already see countless concepts of the infinite universe from the most popular Lotus Sutra and the Avatamsaka Sutra.